In this video, we solve problem 15.2.027 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to find the total mass of the wire with density rho, whose shape is modeled by R. So R is t squared times i hat plus 2t times j hat plus t times k hat. Personally, I would rather write that in component form. So that'll be t squared times i hat 2t 2t times j hat plus t times k hat. Just list your x of t, y of t, and um, c of t right there. We're told that um, the wire um, is modeled by this for t between 1 and 7. And we're told that density is a function of position in that wire. And I guess the density increases as the z value increases, turns out to be proportional to the z value and that constant of proportionality k is positive, of course, because um, this is a mass per unit length. Um, and of course that would have to be positive. All right, so if I want to find the total mass of a wire, I'm just going to evaluate the line integral of that density function, which is mass per unit length times a tiny length piece. Mass per unit length times length is gonna give me the mass of a little piece. We're gonna add those up over the entire um, curve and that's going to give us the total mass. Um, now in this case, um, our density function is just kz. So we're evaluating the line integral of kz um, over that curve C. Now, we can't just stick with this. In general, we can't just stick with this. We have to evaluate an equivalent line integral in terms of the variable t. t is a variable that sort of ties everything together. We'll evaluate, in general, from t equals a to t equals b. And t equals a and b are the t values where we start and stop tracing out that curve. So in our case, um, a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 7 because we start at t equals 1 and we end at t equals 7. And then we'll take this density function, which is a function of x, y, and z, and we'll write that in terms of t just by using the parametric equations of that curve. We'll replace the x with x of t because we know that when we're on the curve, x is given by t squared. So we would replace all the x's with t squared or x of t in general. We would replace all of the y's with whatever y is in terms of t. In our case, that would be a 2t. And we'll replace all the z's with whatever z is in terms of t. In our case, that'll just be a t. And then this ds is a tiny length or tiny distance traveled along that curve. That tiny length is given by uh, the magnitude of r prime times dt. That's our ds in terms of t. Now, if R was a position function, and I know it's not in this context, but if it were a position function, um, the derivative would be velocity and this would be speed times time. So even though that's not appropriate in this case, we're not dealing with a position function here, I'm thinking about it that way it can help you remember that, that that's what our formula is. Some tiny length would be um, that, or some, some tiny distance traveled along the curve, excuse, excuse me, would be um, some speed times a tiny time interval. Okay, um, so that is what we're doing for this particular um, function. We'll use the values of t that were given to us. We start at t equals 1, we end at t equals 7. Then we need k times z in terms of t. Let's k times t in our case. z is equal to t. We sub that in. And then we'll have to multiply by the magnitude of r prime of t. And that's a little bit more involved this time because r prime or r of t looks like that. So let's um, do that computation down here. That r, which is this. Then we need to take the derivative of r. Remember when you take the derivative of a vector valued function, you take the derivative term by term. And then we want the magnitude of that. Remember what we do to find that magnitude. We take the components. In this case, we've got three components. We square them, we add them, and take the square root. If you're squaring a product, you want to square the first factor and the second factor. So 
we end up with the square root of 4t squared plus uh, 5 there. That is our, our prime of t. So our mass integral turns out to be the integral from 1 to 7 of k times t times this, which I can replace with the square root of 4t squared plus 5. And then we just look at that like a calc one integral and we say to ourselves, how do we evaluate that? Well, first of all, K is just a constant so we could factor that out. And I notice I've got a product. I've got T times this, this square root function. Now, since I have a function nested inside another function, I think to myself, U substitution is probably a good choice. If U substitution works, U is usually a function nested inside another function. So I would guess that u is equal to that inside function there, 4t squared plus 5. Now, we're never really sure that works until we compute the derivative of that. We don't have to always write it down, but we can compute that derivative in our head. We say the derivative of 4t squared is going to be a constant times t, and I've got a t there, so the u sub will work. When we actually compute that derivative, we get 8t. So du is 8t times dt. You can always adjust the constant. I don't have an 8 up there. That's OK. If I want to solve this for um, t dt, I'll divide both sides by 8 or multiply by 1 8, the same thing. And so I have t dt is 1 8 of du. All right, so now we're almost ready to write the integral entirely in terms of u. We just need some new bounds. So I will evaluate my equation for u at the original bounds, the bounds for t. And the, that will give me my bounds for u. So we'll have u of 7 equals 4 times 7 squared plus 5, and u of 1 equals 1 times, or 4 times 1 squared plus 5. That one's 9, and this one is 4 times 49 plus 5. So that's that. Uh, 196 uh, plus 1 is 201. Okay, so those are my bounds. This says start at t equals 1 and end at t equals 7. Because I'm going to write my integral in terms of u, I need to start with u equals 9 and end at u equals 201. The k is still there. And that t dt can be replaced by 1 eighth of du. I am literally writing 1 eighth of du instead of that t dt. I'll just factor that 1 eighth out to the left and put my dt off on the far right. And then the only thing that's left is that u inside. And we're taking the square root of that. So that's a u to the 1 half power. All right. So now we've got this k over 8, which I'll just bring outside. And we can take the antiderivative of this using the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. And then we divide by the new exponent. Dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. Two goes into eight uh, four times. Then we'll evaluate this from u equals nine to u equals 201. So I will have a k over 12 out front. And then I have this 201 to the 3 halves power. And this is something you'll see me do a lot if you watch my videos often. Um, if I have something to the 2 thirds, or excuse me, 3 halves power, um, I think of that as itself times uh, the square root of itself uh, because one plus one half is that three halves. And so when I see 201 to the three halves, I'm thinking 201 times the square root of 201. And then over here, I will subtract uh, nine times the square root of nine and the square root of nine is three. So that turns out to be a 27. So the mass of our wire that lies along uh, the graph of R of t is k over 12 times 201 times the square root of 201 minus 27. And that's it. That's how we evaluate that line integral.